Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I need to correct an error that I made a few days ago in the In Presence segment. It was originally titled The Hypnopompic Transition, and uh, I changed the title. I wanted to make it more accurate, so I changed the title to The Hypnogogic Transition, but still, the error is there in the yeah, monologue itself. It was about the experience that we have falling asleep, entering into the dream state. And I tried to describe in some detail what that process was like for me and for many people. And I made the mistake of calling it the hypnopompic transition, largely because the word psychopomp was in my mind, and I saw the psychopomp as the guide of souls into their own depths. In fact, uh, in some of the tarot cards, the card uh, that is known as the hierophant, the, or sometimes called the pope, is also sometimes called the psychopomp. And I had this image in my mind of a yeah, somebody, for example, who is uh, the organizer of the ancient Greek mystery traditions, would be a psychopomp leading people into the depths of their own psyche. So I thought that would be equivalent of leading people or guiding people, carrying people into the dream state if it was hypnopomp. But I discovered my error and realized that actually hypnogogic is the state as we enter into sleep. Hypnopompic is the state as we're waking up from sleep. And furthermore, as I researched the matter a bit further, I realized that the word psychopomp actually is sometimes associated with the figure of the grim reaper. In other words, a being who can traverse both the world of the living and the dead and is able to guide the souls of the living into the realm of the dead when their time has come. Well, that's a little bit different than the hierophant or, or the pope. So, and then again, not so different because in some ways the depths of the psyche, the soul, and the realm of the deceased are very much related to each other, whether you believe in survival after death or not. Because even at the mythological level, the depths of the human psyche are described. Now, what does this mean for us, especially in the context of these in-presence monologues in which I've hinted, uh, sometimes more indirectly, sometimes more directly, that the ability of people to enter into the lucid dreaming state is also related to the ability to enter into contact with the deceased, to begin to get a glimpse of or a communication with or an opening into what the Tibetans call the bardo planes. And that the hierophant or the psychopomp is the guide and actually is a walker between the worlds. And can we become walkers between the worlds? Is that even desirable? I don't think it's desirable for most people. I don't. I think most people want to be in the realm of the living and not even think about the realm of the dead, unless you're grieving, for example. But I do know that People who have an interest in psychical research, people who have an interest in parapsychology, people who have an interest in human potential and consciousness are curious about these things. After all, there's been scientific research, empirical investigations into the nature of the afterlife going on now since 1882 when the Society for Psychical Research was formed in England. And there are certainly antecedents to that. So, in these monologues, I've hinted, at least hinted, if, <laughs> if not been more explicit, that that's a possibility worthy of our exploration. 
and that the psychopomp may be ourselves. We may become the ones who walk between the worlds. And I do know that some of our viewers are experiencing that right now. And I know that in many communities, that kind of talent is a gift that is greatly appreciated, especially by people who are grieving. But there's more to be said about it, much more than just addressing uh, the loss of a loved one, because there's a whole realm of science to be understood here. The whole question, if, if there is such a thing as an afterlife, and there are many good reasons to think that uh, indeed, there is everything from near-death experience to the reincarnation research to research with mediums and to research on apparitions to research into the ancient mystery traditions, a, a, a culture in which people learned to let go of their fear of death altogether. And it was a strong culture. There are many reasons to... Uh, engage in this exploration. One might say that the afterlife itself is a whole new continent waiting to be discovered by those who are still alive. I know some people would say, no, it is not to be explored. There are biblical prohibitions against it and other reasons as well. We need to let those who have departed, move on to their own spiritual evolution without clinging to them and holding them back uh, to be with us here on the earth plane as, what, teachers and guides and so on. There is a sense, now that I have understood the error that I made and that hypnopompic is waping, waking up from sleep, not entering into sleep, and psychopompic is really uh, represents as re or refers to the transition from normal waking consciousness into a realm of uh, the departed. That dying is probably much more like waking up from sleep than it is like falling asleep. And that is the thought I would like to leave you with today. Thank you for being with me.